uh, uh, recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Olson. Well, before, I ask, before I ask my questions, I want to thank the chairman, the ranking member, all the members of the committee, the staff, for giving me the honor to participate in this hearing involving issues with fetal tissue research. This issue is very important back home in Texas 22. Dr. Prentice, I read all 12 pages of written testimony last night. And while it can't compare to the Bible, I was saying amen over and over and over. Page two, I quote, adult stem cells are also showing therapeutic promise for other diseases and conditions where there has previously been no available treatment option, end quote. Amen. Page one, you offer a quote, a public face for such patients. Have I got the face for you? Hmm. This is Sarah Hughes. She lives in Katy, Texas. She is my guest at Donald Trump's first speech before Congress. When she was 11 months old, she was diagnosed with systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. As you all know, that is a death sentence for this young lady. Her, addiction, her disease was treated with baseline cancer. Drugs. The drugs made it even worse. She withered away. She did eat solid food for over 10 years because by reject the food. God put her in touch with a young man who had an experience with cell text, adult stem cells in Houston, Texas. What they did with Sarah is they take her own stem cells from her body's fat and spin it up and make a whole lot more cells and inject them back in Sarah's body. This was how she looked for her stem cell treatment. Her mom, Fiona, told me this picture was taken. She was probably two months or less from being called home by our Lord. Sarah had two problems with stem cells. First of all, despite the fact that these are her own cells, our FDA says this is a drug. It can't be rejected, but somehow it's a drug. So while we can harvest the stem cells in Houston, to inject her body, she has to go to Cancun, Mexico. The first injection she had, she said, I felt a change. And guess what happened within two years? I was at that young lady's wedding. She never, ever thought that would happen except for her adult stem cell therapy. So, Mr. Prentice, Texans love to brag. So you've got some cowboy boots on, got some text in you. Could you brag other stories about Sarah? Is this isolated or is this commonplace going more and more commonplace every day in America? Adult stem cells saving lives all across the spectrum with all these different diseases. Well, Congressman, yeah, you've got a face there. I talked about a face. There are probably getting close to two million of those types of faces treated with adult stem cells now around the globe. Uh, and, you know, the story you told, Allison Carr's story, treating with uh, her own adult stem cells for multiple sclerosis. Uh, Sonia Kuntz, successfully treated for her stroke with adult stem cells. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And we could, uh, frankly, use up the committee's time, Mr. Chairman, to go through all of the various things. But the, the point is still that adult stem cells are the gold standard when it comes to stem cells for patients, and the only one showing such great success over and over and over, whether we're talking about Texas, 
Kansas or anywhere around the globe. So, Mr. Chairman, may I interject because this really is a very important point. Adult stem cell therapy that has been provided by these clinics that offer unproven therapies and are based on anecdotes have caused tremendous harm. For example, women and several women in Florida were blinded by this treatment. We have to be extremely cautious. Dr. Temple, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and this is your patient welfare. On, but your commentary on Dr. Prentice's, I didn't allow him to make commentary on, on yours. And so if we're going to get a colloquy going here, uh, we're, we're just not going to do that. Okay. And, and so because I, I can, we also have proven evidence where we actually put in fetal tissue uh, from a standpoint of some brain research that didn't turn out real well, as you're well aware of, right? Um, this this is the case. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Again, so we again that we need, was an we need good science. We, hold on. we need therapy. good science yep. that works works through that. And so, uh, since I jumped on, I'll give you one last question, uh, uh, Mr. Olson, and we've got to yield back. A different topic here, but it's the entire panel. I know the entire world was horrified. We found out that in China, a doctor using had modified embryos genetically and had babies born alive. Now he has disappeared. That was condemned by China, every healthcare professional, ethical people across the world. But sadly, Mama Mata Rice University had a role in that. He trained there, the Chinese doctor did, before he came back to China and did his evil deeds. So my question is, how can we get in front of this and make sure this never, ever happens again? Dr. Sander Lee. How can we get in front of this to make sure that something as unethical yeah, uh, as that yes, happens yes. again? Um, well, when we are. have, I, I, as far as you want me to speak specifically about the Sure. The, or do you want me to talk just in general about, I mean, my, what I, my initial response is that when we are faced with other things in the, in the country, such as fetal tissue that, um, that is non-controversial, um, that it has a controversial issue, that, that that's where we stop it. And so, but as far as this issue, I think my colleague actually has a lot of experience with this, and I'll pass that to him. Okay. okay, we're way over time, so very brief, please. Congressman, one of the things I think... Text, everything's bigger in Texas, and so is his time <laughs> clock, so yes, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Congressman, I think very quickly, one thing that we should probably look at is a moratorium on these sorts of experiments with embryos. Great idea. Dr. Temple, 10 seconds, ma'am. One, 1,000. You, 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 Dr. Temple, he, I think he was asking the entire panel, so if you want to, if you want to comment on that, you can, and, and you don't have to. I, I'm not a bioethicist, but I do think that the response from the community, the immediate response from China, the immediate response from the International Society for Stem Cell Research that you saw was absolutely appropriate. Uh, thank I, I thank you. I thank Mr. Back. Merry Christmas. I, I, I thank the gentleman. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan. 